It's the CES meeting on January 3rd of 2024, our first meeting of the year and first meeting in a long while. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, the Harden function and the possibility of using the Harden function to create a new integrity level beyond freeze and, uh, freeze and seal. Um, and uh, I'll hand it off to Matthew. Yeah. Um, so, so far, Harden uh, has been defined as simply a transitive uh, freezing of an object, its properties, uh, and its prototypes. And uh, we've been encountering a few uh, complications with the uh, JavaScript language uh, so far that we're thinking that we could piggyback on Harden to help solve. Uh, so that is one of the things, the two issues in particular are uh, stamping of private properties uh, through the return override uh, trick. Uh, and the other one is the override mistake, uh, basically being unable to use an assignment to uh, set a property if that property uh, is non-configurable, non-writable, uh, or actually if it's just non-writable uh, in, uh, in its prototype chain. Um, and while looking into some of those things, uh, some questions came up uh, about what should the behavior of Harden be regarding uh, proxies uh, if we decide to make uh, to, to make Harden more than a, a transitive freeze. Uh, and uh, yeah, and, and so how to uh, how to how pro proxies should behave or should they be even involved in the hardening process uh, at all if uh, Harden is more than a simple, a simple transitive uh, freeze? Um, currently, uh, freezing is defined as a non-extensible object that has all its properties as non-configurable and non-writable. Uh, non uh, in that sense, the proxy traps always get involved, uh, whether it is for checking if an object is frozen or uh, whether the, uh, or, or to freeze uh, the object itself. Uh, in particular, like uh, the, the steps of the, ch uh, of the spec is gonna check if uh, the object is non-extensible and then enumerate all the own properties and then check uh, all of them uh, for configure and uh, writable being false. Um, they're for frozen and sealed, which are, uh, I guess, actually the. So in the spec, there is a lot of. There's a notion of an integrity level. Uh, there is a couple uh, spec uh, operations that are called, uh, one in particular, for example, is called test integrity level. Test integrity level. And uh, that only checks if a an object is sealed or frozen. So extensible, which is can be considered as a, an integrity level as well, is it's a little bit unclear if it's actually an integrity level or not, but we could consider it as an integrity level. Um, extensible is basically implemented as a um, as a slot on an object uh, in the spec, whereas uh, seal and uh, frozen integrity level is checked whether the object is extensible or not. And if it is uh, non-extensible, then checking each property, whether it's configurable, non-configurable for sealed and for uh, frozen and non-writable for frozen only. Um, so if we were to consider Harden as somewhat of a, an extra uh, integrity level. Um, if, oh yeah, so first, let me backtrack for a second. Uh, the extensible status of an object is checked uh, in the spec uh, implicitly through some operations where the sealed and the frozen 
uh, integrity levels are never checked by the ch uh, by a spec itself unless uh, called through the uh, is sealed or is uh, frozen predicates. Um, what we're trying to do here is consider whether a hardened integrity level would uh, could be used as a, an implicit uh, signal uh, for some other operations, such as stamping a private field on uh, on an object, or uh, if the prototype is hardened, uh, indicating that the uh, that a property can be assigned to a, to a, to an object or not. Uh, as such, we would want the hardened integrity level to be implicitly checked by spec uh, operations. Um, so from a performance point of view, it's fairly obvious that we don't want to do a transitive check of the object and uh, that, it, that the object draft is hardened whenever we do one of those operations. So as a spec uh, and an implementation, we would want a flag the same way as is extensible to be applied onto the object. Uh, so it can be a, a, a O1 uh, cost when looking up if an object is hardened or not. Um, and so because, because it becomes a, uh, a flag applied onto the object, now it becomes a question of what the behavior of proxy is, whether that flag is applied to the proxy object, whether it's only applied to uh, the target objects, and uh, whether the proxy has a say in saying that the proxy object is uh, hardened or not, or can be hardened or not. I think that hopefully summarizes uh, some of the questions. Yeah, let, let me jump in with a few comments then. Um, the, first of all, with the uh, distinction between uh, non-extensible versus sealed versus frozen, let's give a name to that, um, which is non-extensible, let's call it an explicit integrity level. Um, and let's call sealed and frozen an emergent integrity level. Um, I decided on emergent rather than just implicit or something because it's really a um, a question that's answered by looking at several other pieces of explicit state. And the uh, the thing about an emergent integrity level is you can fall into it by an incremental step if you're, if you've got an object that's almost frozen and then you make one more property non-configurable, now you've got a frozen object. And um, and if there's changes in semantics other than the answer to is frozen, if there were changes in semantics that hung off of whether the object is frozen, then having the semantics change as a result of what seems like an unrelated incremental step making an individual property non-configurable or deleting a property, um, uh, or that seems uh, that seems surprising. A uh, harden with uh, you know essentially the 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 first choice that's highlighted by Matthew summary is whether harden should be an explicit integrity level or an emergent integrity level, and um, uh, and. My main problem with it being an emergent integrity level is uh, the, the hardened semantics we have right now is like the frozen semantics in the sense that there's no change in semantics that's hung off of whether something is hardened. So having it be an emergent integrity level and then having an explicit bit in the object for caching the emergent judgment, just like an implementation could do for frozen, um, uh, would be perfectly fine. But as soon as we want to hang other semantics on it, these these changes with regard to the two the two um, forms of override behavior, let's let's say, um, uh, then uh, the unrelated the incre the incremental change problem is actually much worse for hardened even than it is for frozen, because now, if you have an almost hardened subgraph where the top object is frozen and the immediate neighbors are frozen, some 
some object far away that's not frozen that causes the uh, root object not to be hardened, freezing that object far away now causes the root object to be hardened. And for that to cause a change in semantics, I think is too surprising. Um, mm -hmm. So from that, I derive that the desire uh, for hardened to be an explicit integrity level like non-extensibility, where it's caused only by an explicit operation that calls for it like harden. Um, and, um, and that's what I had to say about that. So, and so, uh, so the question that, that, that always pops into my mind when you talk about this, and, and, and I think you kind of touched on this at various points, both of you, is what's the difference between a frozen object and a hardened object? And in, in, in our kind of classic formulation, there's nothing that's different about the object itself. It's all the differences have to do with what you can assume about other objects that the object refers to, right. uh, which is a little bit of a weird concept in sort of Java language spec world. Um, and, and I think the proposal here is to, to add some things which actually make them operationally different in the object itself. And I think I'm still a little confused as to what different specific differences are being proposed. Um, um yeah. right. So the, the difference being proposed as Mark and I mentioned it's in the uh, two return, in, in the two override uh, mechanisms. Um, the first one and the most important one to solve is the uh, override mistake, uh, which is colloquially called override mistake. There's still some debate about whether that is a mistake or not. Uh, the committee will not. Yeah, but the people that. who disagree are wrong. So it's <laughs> <laughs> I will not take a position here, but. It is painful uh, for our users, that's for sure. Um, so to recap uh, the override mistake, to make sure everyone is on board, is uh, if a property is non writable in your prototype chain and you try to set that property through assignment uh, on the object that has that non writable object in its prototype chain, the assignment will fail. Um, even worse, if you're in non-strict mode, it will fail silently, which is terrible. Um, the idea here is to use the information that the prototype object was hardened, not simply having a property with a non-writable uh, status to inform uh, an opt-out into the uh, override mistake behavior. Saying that Basically, any objects that have that object in its prototype chain uh, do not trigger the override mistake if the property is found on that prototype object. I'm wondering if, if rhetorically, it might be better to market this as opt out of the override mistake rather than harden. Yes, but we want also, so the second behavior uh, that uh, that we want to fix is um, the private property stamping through the return override trick. Uh, that's a different override. Um, so basically private properties are entirely modeled as uh, a putting the object in the weak map as a key uh, and attaching information through the object uh, that way. Um, this is all great uh, and fine, which is why, um, so, okay, the second component of this is through class constructors, you can, the base class can return, the base class or any uh, class in, uh, in the prototype chain or in the extend chain, it's actually not the prototype chain, um, can return a value uh, that is not the, object that was implicitly constructed for uh, by the, the construct mechanism. Um, when, when the equivalent of supper is called, 
uh, super, I don't know how you pronounce that one correctly. So when super is cold, um, is right after returning from super is when the class logic is gonna apply uh, private fields uh, or fields, uh, both private field and field onto the object that was, uh, that was returned from the super. Normally it's the objects of the uh, class chain, uh, but with the return override trick, you can end up returning any object, even though it's not actually uh, an instance of the class and uh, the private fields are gonna be stamped on that. Uh, what that mechanism ends up doing is uh, effectively creating a way to have undeniable weak maps uh, by syntax. By syntax, through class and private field, you can always create a weak map and use an object as a weak map key. Um, this is a problem in our case because uh, we virtualize weak map, we replace the weak map implementation, and for certain keys, uh, we pretend that uh, the object uh, is still referenced. Uh, when in fact we let the key uh, get garbage collected and we recreate it as needed in our virtual object system. So that uh, that whole mechanism of letting garbage collection take place and then uh, recreation, transparent recreation is uh, leveraging uh, weak ref and uh, finalization registry, which is the uh, garbage collection sensor, uh, sorry, a garbage collection sensing mechanism. So through weak map, virtualization or lack of virtualization, we basically expose uh, the garbage collection mechanism, even though that is the power that we uh, we have actually removed in our programs. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just make a historical note here, which is uh, this dilemma is, um, I'll, I'll take the blame for it, it's largely my fault. Um, the uh, I insisted uh, in, trying to figure out what the semantics of adding private fields to objects are, or having, having private fields is that the uh, semantics be defined in terms of a weak map equivalence. And I believe it was Justin Ridgewell who had the um, uh, correct, you know, the, the, what is in retrospect, I will say the correct intuition, which is I think he wanted uh, a, an object that's already frozen, not to be able to um, uh, add private fields to it, uh, which would have solved our problem. Um, uh, and I argued against that because of the weak map equivalence. Um, and the thing that uh, I that everyone missed, including me, uh, was that the built-in weak maps are deniable, but a syntactic, but by making them by making something reachable by syntax equivalent to them, you've made the functionality of weak maps um, uh, undeniable. And and denying weak maps is not something I would I you know it's not something you want to deny, but it's something you want to virtualize. And that was the thing I completely missed. And it just never occurred to me that there would be a need to virtualize weak maps. So in this case, um, we would basically, uh, as Mark mentioned, if we if the the object was frozen, uh, we wouldn't be able to apply uh, private fields. This is the behavior. If the object is hardened, uh, we wouldn't allow applying a a, a private field. Um, there is precedent for objects being disallowed from having private fields applied. Uh, the spec made the change last year to allow the host desi to designate some uh, object as uh, exempt from private field stamping. This is done for uh, HTML. Uh, they didn't want their special window proxy object to be able to receive uh, stamps like that for roughly same reasons as us. I'm just curious. Um, wouldn't it, doesn't it seem like, so the root problem here is you can't virtualize the weak map or the implicit weak map because of the um, return override. Couldn't we solve that more directly by making that virtualizable through some sort of hook that uh, that is exposed and that you can um, address? Isn't that a more direct way rather than saying, 
hardened objects because I would assume what you're saying here is when you harden an object, you also can no longer put it as a key in a in a weak map, which no, somehow feels no, we're, strange. We're, we're not to saying me. no. We're not saying that the um, uh, we're uh, weak. We the uh, weak maps would would not be changed. You can still have uh, hardened objects as keys in weak maps. Um, the thing is, okay. the thing that's exposed as the global weak map can be changed by initialization time code. Um, and you're right, if we could uh, mm -hmm. if we could similarly change the weak map like functionality that's brought about by uh, private property, private field initialization, um, uh, that would solve that problem. Uh, we mm -hmm. have not explored any proposals for enabling that to be virtualized. And that, that certainly is something mm -hmm. we, sh we should discuss. I mean, the, the fact that both you and then the web folks who also embed JavaScript or as a, as a host, the fact that both of you ran into this does seem to point at the kind of missing virtualization layer, missing hook that hosts can sort of yeah. tailor, right? Uh, I mean, I, I, I proposed making this functionality uh, exposed to uh, JavaScript. So it would have been roughly uh, maybe a, an API uh, allowing you to create an object that cannot be, um, that cannot get private fields stamped on it, on them. Uh, or I, I, I'm starting to really dislike in JavaScript that just holding a, an object reference, you get to, uh, to modify its internal state, including frozen or make an object non-extensible and things like that. Um, there might not be enough motivation uh, to prevent it in this case by... But, but wouldn't the, I mean, I, I see what you mean. So the API you had in mind was like, oh, I want to create these sort of unstampable objects, but isn't it rather like, um, no, you actually want to have a hook where you could implement certain logic to make certain objects uh, like um, exempt from this behavior. But um, I mean, it seems a bit weird to always come back to uh, like, um, I, because, I think I mean, look... inherently there is nothing wrong with stamping, stamping an object with information from the outside, like, right? Like we do with weak maps. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. Yeah. yeah, the 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 main the main problem with a, a hook is where does the hook live? If it's uh, if it's something global that would get called whenever you try to stamp a no, uh, private property uh, onto an object, uh, it would automatically gain an, a reference to that object getting stamped. That that feel that's that's too much of an ambient power, mm -hmm. um, which means that the the hook would need to live on the object itself, which goes back to you need to create the objects in special way. Uh, or it could be a realm-wide hook that's a host hook provided by the realm constructor. Yeah, but it would, once it, you're inside the realm, yes, by the realm constructor, the thing is that you once you're inside the realm and you have code running inside the realm, uh, which is how most things are set up, uh, you don't have a way to um, to get that power then. No, that's Unless... right. You have, to, you have to create a realm yeah. that, um, and, then, and then you would run all of, you know, then we would run all of our code within the created realm, having set the realm up to virtualize the implicit weak map. You're right, but there is, I mean, we have shadow realm, I guess, but there is no, besides shadow realm, I would say, and the problem with Shadow Realm is that the object drafts are not uh, are not shared, so the hook wouldn't be able to get an ac access to the object reference either. Um, besides Shadow Realm, there is no there, step way to create a realm. Yeah, Shadow Realm was what I was when I said create a realm. I meant create a Shadow Realm, uh, yeah. and and uh, you know you could you could at that time. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm inventing API and fly here and, and um, uh, certainly haven't thought about this before, but you could uh, imagine that what you're doing at the time you create the shadow realm is you set up the hook so that the 
uh, the hook craps to something that's within the created realm, but it had to have been set up when you set up the 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 you know at the, at the time you created the shadow realm. Yeah, I don't think how that would work with the shadow realm uh, API. We hook them. Um, Uh, um, Eli, Eli? Um, yeah, yeah, we hook them. Uh, it's just an experimental at the moment. It's not in production, but uh, we hook the creation methods primarily. Right, but it's a power right. that lives outside of the shadow realm would not be able to get access to object references inside a shadow realm, even if the hooking mechanism is done on the creation time. Yeah, yeah, we have to would be stuff too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the only mechanism at that point is uh, providing a module that would be evaluated inside the realm that exposes, uh, that has some exports for the hooks, basically. That That's roughly the only way that you could, uh, you could wear this. Uh, and importing, uh, if we were to add this to the spec, importing uh, a module is an asynchronous operation, uh, which means you uh, your realm creation is, uh, is automatically asynchronous, which brings all kinds of complexities. Uh, Eli, who's? Hi, yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm Eli. I work for uh, a privacy and security compliance vendor. Uh, I just participate in some of these. Uh, generally, I join halfway through. <laughs> so when you say we hook them, are you talking about a JavaScript implementation or or what? Uh, client side shims essentially that you would uh, run on top of your existing app but prior to anything that invokes anything or any globals. Uh, it's so similar, say, sorry, go ahead. So when you say that you hook uh, object creation, you mean essentially replacing object create? Or... Uh, well, no, they're not actually hooking that method, but when I'm saying we're hooking the, heat, the creation methods for Shadow Realm, also injecting some stuff, we do some similar stuff for workers. Yeah. Um, it's it's not the same as like your fundamental this is unhackable thing. It's more of a just a usability for a security design aspect. Uh, right. And what we're thing. what we're discussing is creation of objects, all objects within the realm, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. Oh, got it. Sorry. Can, can I can I listening. if I'm trying to reason about sort of the implicit the the return override as being a weak map, right? It's, so it's kind of like, it's as if every class that you create in a realm is first creating some sort of internal weak map to store the private fields, right? Mm -hmm. And then in this proposal, what I, I guess it would look like is if inside the realm, you can set up a kind of constructor and then all the classes will create that weak map from that constructor, right? So you can replace that constructor, constructor with your virtualized weak map, and then all the classes should create an instance of your virtualized weak map to store the private fields, right? That I think that's kind of what we're looking at here. Yeah, to, to make a, a, a straw proposal, which is obviously a compatibility break that would be not, not acceptable as is, but except for the, the historical issue, if you said that whatever the the global binding is of the name weak map was the constructor that was invoked by the class constructor to create mm. implicit weak map. Uh, that would be unpleasant in many ways, but it would solve this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, um, pardon. Does it, how much, how does it complicate this design that in practice, private fields are not actually using a, a weak map or at least using the inverted form of the weak map like we did with excess if i'm not mistaken where the properties are actually stored in the struct of the object so are you asking are you asking in terms of um of at the at the implementation level about the representation yeah, yeah. like would, would we get pushback from an implementer because this well, design consideration would force a change oh. in the internal representation. M most, li most likely, I mean, uh, in all engines I'm aware of, a uh, private field is uh, is part of the, the object itself. It's not like a weak map uh, where mm -hmm. there's an association between the, the weak map and, uh, and... In fact, in excess, the implementation of private fields and the implementation of weak map is very similar. 
uh, since we, uh, I mean, a few years ago, following Mark Miller ID, we transposed the implementation of weak maps. So there is, there is, there is some similarity, even in the implementation. However, uh, requiring uh, the creation of uh, uh, private fields into objects and so on to always go through uh, the like uh, the public weak map, uh, uh, some public weak map uh, inside uh, outside of the creation of the class that will be a significant burden. On the implementation. But I don't quite understand. I mean, an implementation can always notice that if you don't change anything about the default behavior, you can still completely short circuit everything, right? In the default case, nothing changes. And even in the virtualized case, you can probably set it up so that, I mean, depending on how you design the hook, you can probably still let the implementation short circuit. Yeah, I, I I don't think adding a hook now it doesn't seem feasible. Uh, because I that's how I was started. Like, it's either it either needs to be a power when creating the realm, uh, because it cannot really be a power left inside the realm because that's just too powerful of a power. Um, and even for the class hooking class constructor hooking mechanism, that's still a global power whenever you construct a class, maybe not for every object, but still when you construct a class. So I don't think, and at the end of the day, looking up the global weak map is the same. It's a global, uh, it's an ambient global hook. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would be extremely uncomfortable having something like that uh, in the language. Um, so if a ambient hook is out of the question, I think- Well, the, 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 the problem is, of course, the ambient hook is there. It's in the syntax, right? It's the, it's the return override. Uh, right, but then today you can't intercept it. That's the- uh... Right, I mean, by hook, we mean being able to intercept it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, having user code execute while uh, you're in the middle of your class instance construction. Uh, I mean, obviously there is, and, and in this case, having user code that is unrelated to the class implementation itself. That's my concern. Exactly, that's what I mean by a burden. I mean, if you okay. don't know yeah. what happened, I mean, yeah. Okay. Let, let me suggest that we don't consider the hook to be a closed issue. We consider it to still be open, but we table it. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we we kind of return to the to the mainline discussion, which is what if we hang the suppression of um, uh, the return override um addition of private fields what if what if we hang it on harden as a new explicit integrity level the mark mentioned an argument that that was on uh, that, that that it had a smell uh, and the action at a distance when something mm -hmm. emerged well, wait yeah, I have a good question. Think... where would this yeah. harden go uh, are we referring to an implementation right now we're, we're so the uh, I think Eli, did you? Did, I think you you joined late, if I remember my. Statement. I did. I, I know this is about SES, and uh, generally it's like there's two t tracks always, like the standards and specs, and then how you guys are implementing against it for your utilities. We're um, we're right talking now, about standards and specs here. Uh, yeah. We're we're considering proposing at, in the future a Harden as a. Uh, as a standard mechanism, uh, and we were trying to define the semantics of what it would have in that in that case. Is um, this similar to the twenty twenty two like dot lockdown proposal? I remember reading about N nothing related to iOS. This is talking about the Shadow Realm dot lockdown like method. There was somebody proposing this like a while back, and then like exposing Our certain public fields. Uh, they're useful. Harden is a part of uh, a lockdown uh, Harden realm. Uh, so 
Um, there, there are actually interactions between Harden and lockdown that we might be able to discuss someday, but um, we're also thinking that Harden might be able to uh, stand on its own with that uh, lockdown itself. Uh, but that's something we would need to discuss more what the semantics of Harden are exactly. Uh, but uh, basically Harden is a uh, transitive uh, freezing of uh, the object and all its properties and currently all its uh, prototypes. Interesting. Yeah. And you, this isn't related to realms, you'd harden it, then you'd pass it to the realm, you're saying? No, you can harden an object. You get an object and it gets basically transitively frozen. Like, frozen. where would I be hardening it? And is the object passed directly? Or is, sorry, this is like, I probably should have a this paper would be in front a of me. That stands beside object.freeze, essentially. Ah, yeah. got it. The, Makes the sense. same way you can freeze an object, you can harden it, uh, which is basically a more extensive version of it. And what we're discussing here is whether it is an emergent feature like freeze, whether uh, when all the object and its properties and prototypes are frozen, if it becomes automatically hardened, or if it is an explicit uh, property of an object, uh, once it hardened, it, it is only hardened by an explicit hardened mechanism, uh, capture as a uh, states flag on the object itself, the same way extensible is currently. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, let's, let's separate a couple of notions. One of them is the emergent transitive frozenness of an object, which, which is an emergent property, right? The transitive frozenness of its of its properties and potentially also prototypes. That's the 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 or prototypes is a separate conversation. Um, the um, whereas harden as an integrity level would be a separate thing that is explicit, right? So an explicit harden integrity level, as long as it's explicit and the behaviors that depend on whether it's hardened, like this property override behavior, um, and and uh, pardon the, both the override property override mistake behavior and the return override behavior depend on the explicit flag. I don't see the action of distance as a problem. Something can be emergent, right. frozen. Um, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, if we treat it like object dot prevent extensions, like something you have to do explicitly to an object, there is no action at a distance. Yeah. So since there is no action at a distance, and we're so, is there any remaining uh, concerns with an explicit uh, integrity, uh, Arden integrity level being used as a basis for uh, fixing the property, uh, the return override? private field stamping, and the uh, override mistake. Only proxy. The, uh, if you make it explicit, yes. right. then we have so, to get into proxy issues. No. Aside from proxies, I don't see a problem with it. Yeah, I don't have any so, problems with it either. I would like a list of some use cases that are more like easily supported through this. Like uh, asynchronous afterwards, it'd be nice to just review that. Uh, I don't really have any skin in this game. Our use case doesn't require that at all, but it's uh, something that I would like to look at. We, we do need to uh, provide better communication about the value proposition of a hardened object. This has been something that we've been struggling with and evaluating what are the guarantees that we get currently with hardened? Mm -hmm. um, like what what type what type of guarantee like what it's we have learned that the guarantees that Harden provides are weaker than we want them to be, which is part of the reason we're having this conversation. Um, and they pertain not so they, they pertain not so much to um the lockdown guarantees, but much more about the past style invariance, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Is basically the idea we want, I, I think that the property that we want is to be able to uh, for the receiver of a capability from a third party to be able to harden that thing and then trust uh, and that, that and then be able to be uh, that various kinds of interaction with that well, object are safe. Makes sense. Uh, you, you can even make it simpler, hold, hold, right? Hold, hold on, hold yeah. on. I don't I don't know what Chris is talking about yet. Yeah. Um, and to be clear, neither do I. The, the... <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to try to help you with that after you're done. But so, can I maybe Chris? I mean, sir, I just yeah. Um, the what 
property, I, I don't see the interact, I don't understand. I know what we're worried about with regard to past style. And um, I know what we're thinking of doing with regard to past style and the, the and the interaction with proxies, but what interaction with hardened are you thinking about? Because that that's a surprise to me. So uh, go ahead, Matthew. It, let me try to see. From what I understand, is it is that that interaction is that like what can you assume when you're when you have a hardened object? What can you assume about it? And I think at this point, not much is the answer. Uh, you can you can assume uh, what you've observed is not going to change the same as a frozen object, but uh, that 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 you cannot well, you, can, you, you cannot you, assume anything else. No, but you know that transitively, which is which is a big deal. Yes, isn't isn't from a sort of developer perspective what what I've always. Um, thought about with, with, with Harden is that it's the thing you use to make an interface defensible, right? right. And the problem is if right. you just do object dot free, if you create an object like a simple record of properties and functions and you just freeze it, the problem is that the function values, uh, typically like if it's data properties, that's fine. But if it's, if it's, um, if you define functions, the functions are still mutable and you can, you can mutate them, and and I that's wanna... the thing that that stops us from using frozen as a simple way of making an an API defensible. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to jump in and say that object. I feel like sorry. You go first. Yeah, no, Mark. simply nested objects in in, in 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 more clearly. Like if you have uh, a a, a Passes, structure yes. of objects, yes. Uh, yes. just free, you need to explicitly freeze every one of them. If you Correct. really want to make sure, and it's very easy to mess up. And that at the end of the day, that's what yep. Harden gives you. It's like when you want to hand out an object outside, making sure like that yep. object is not going to get uh, mutated by whoever you're handing it to. What's uh, the but, primary difference between this and deep freeze, which is a common utility in lots of libraries? This, it, it, Harden is deep freeze. It's a yep. uh, specified deep freeze. But is there an uh, actual functional difference? Then to, so, to a library's deep freeze implementation is what so, I'm trying to so, specifically get so, at. So I don't know of a uh, of any particular library's deep freeze implementation. Uh, depending on what their deep freeze implementation does, it might or might not be the same as the hardened that we that we've done. Because until we've until this you know until we're we're until this conversation of trying to add new. Um, uh, uh, semantics to it, the override uh, fixing. Uh, up until then, the hardened that we've implemented at Agoric and that we've been using uh, was conceived of from the beginning as a form of deep as a form of deep freeze, but a very very specific form of deep freeze. Got right? it. Um, but um, uh, so just uh, let's not go into any other particular implementations. But I would appreciate a pointer. Yeah, so just to that have deep freeze implementations so that we can compare with them. So that to better understand the case of TC39 is that we can say, look, deep freeze is something that's often implemented. Let's go ahead and move it into the language because moving the language has a bunch of benefits. That would actually help. Uh, just pulling this up a little bit farther back is so everyone here is or not everyone, sorry. The the general uh vibe I'm getting here is that most people here think that a deep freeze or hardened method is quite necessary for a shared contract of uh, capability sharing or capability uh, brokerage between realms. Is that what this? Is that what I'm getting? No, this nothing, has nothing, to do, with, even, nothing oh. to do with realms. Yeah. Okay, got it. So I thought this uh, in, tied in with realms a lot, and I'm like, it was kind of like thinking because we haven't shipped our stuff yet, but uh, whether or not stuff is frozen isn't really key to like where our security guarantees for the cross realm contracts come this in nothing to do with yeah that. yeah yeah so <laughs> thank you for okay, so it's just about usability for securely building apps and nothing from got it this is yeah for makes sense uh, I, I don't like harden it's too vague i do like deep freeze uh, but i understand that the uh implications of the actual implementation you details don't, you don't like vary. the name the name yeah harden i don't like the name the... harden okay. it's, it's too vague like uh, what am i hardening yeah. The, uh, harden accessibility, harden okay. observability, like all kinds of weird things you could harden. Okay, so so um, I would like us not to spend time on the name. Mm. In this discussion. Yeah, sorry, sorry for the bike shed. Uh, Richard, I see your hand. Yeah, I do. I do want to drive home 
uh, a particular detail that might be easy to miss with Agora Cardin, which is that it crawls the entire object graph and as a result makes sense only when the intrinsics also are affected. Like a hardened object cannot exist um, with the current mm. implementation of Harden in an environment where object.prototype is mutable, for instance. So well, the, only if the, only is, if the object is inheriting is, from that. Say again? Yes. Only if the object is actually inheriting from object.prototype. But, but yeah. if you if you find any functions, you'll get to object prototype at uh, somehow. Um, yes, yeah. currently the semantics, Correct. so to be clear, currently the semantics of Harden as implemented by Agoric and by uh, Modable is uh, to walk all the properties, uh, get all the values or the accessors and the prototypes of all the objects encountered and keep walking them uh, until you uh, reach a primitive. Um, and to affirm what Tom was saying, the purpose of hardening is to make is self-defensive. Hardening mm -hmm. something you receive from someone else is not something that isn't doesn't give you any additional benefits that you were expecting. You harden your own API surface so that you can safely pass it to a third party or multiple yes. third parties and be assured exactly. that they're not going to have a communication channel by mutation of their properties. Yep. They may have a communication channel through accessors and mutators as well as, <laughs> uh, as the behavior of any functions that they provide. Yeah, but let's not get into the communication channel a bit too much. It's more like the object cannot be modified. Uh, right. You and can't. so you, whatever whatever you observe about the object is not going to change. There are two things you're trying to lock down. You're trying to or harden you're against, and that is communication channels, yes, but uh, mostly to uh, prevent men in the middle attacks by the modification of the API surface of the object. Right. Though you could just design your, your API to begin with to just send these values without trusting what happens to them afterwards. You know, expect cloning. Um, you have no place to stand in a single realm without freezing the interface of the objects that you're sharing if they're received by multiple parties. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, do, I do think that the communicate. I do, I do want to make the Sorry. communications channel thing explicit because it has actually is a very, very nice and clear uh, invariant, which is uh, if you harden uh, the uh, an API surface, uh, then the then other then then uh, mutual clients of that API surface uh, can only communicate with each other through those shared objects through those shared hardened objects according to the the behavior of the objects uh, and yes. that and that rely that's why we both have to make the the you know the properties. Uh, non-writable, non-configurable, as well as make the objects non-extensible. For, for just the defensive API things, you wouldn't need the non-extensibility. The non-extensibility right. prevents um, the objects themselves being unintended communications channels. So in the end, and, and, it does boil down to making it a usability DX tool so you don't have to implement your API that the currently required well, way. The, the, so the, the problem, the alternative, as you mentioned, uh, Broch very quickly is to uh, basically clone and, and have a different object uh, being returned by your API uh, for every uh, each of its consumers. However, at that point, uh, you completely lose the ability uh, of matching ident identities uh, when you pass your uh, your objects uh, of around. course. Yeah. So uh, well, and, and your uh, copies will still have shared state, right? If, if it if it provides one logical thing, if intended, the copies will have shared state, and you can walk. If they're mutable, you can. I mean, that's not gonna work. Uh, uh, yes, it have to be deeply cloned, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and assume that the intrinsics are uh, are frozen similarly, so that yeah. it can't affect yeah. uh, I, I, you know I, prototype I mean, pollution and things like that. Okay. I, I definitely I agree that Harden seems hold good Hold on, now. hold on, hold on. Point of order, point of order. I have a scheduling question. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, Chris, uh, does this meeting end in eight minutes or are we continuing into the next hour? We are not continuing into the next hour and we really only have a couple of minutes. Okay. Uh, Peter and Patrick, 
we we did not get to the heart of the meeting yet, and the having you here when we get to that heart. Oh, and Tom, of course, uh, having the three of you co here at the same time is was an incredible opportunity, and we didn't get to the main topic yet. Uh, can we get you guys back, all three of you, back at a same future meeting again? And my apologies for the fact that we did not succeed at getting to the actual topic. <laughs> Partly my fault, sorry for that. I just wanted to understand that method. Uh, when, when would that be? Okay, and, so let's any, any 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 week this time, this year, <laughs> I think. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. not not on the 17, not on January 17, because we have uh, the TC53 meeting, but but uh, next week or the week after that, the or the 24th. So the 10th or the 24th. Uh, so, so, does, yeah. uh, yes. so does the 10th work? That, that works for me. I don't know about Peter, but that, that works for me. Okay. Tom? I'll follow up by email. Yeah, next week I can make next week work. I okay. should be able to make it work. And Peter? Oh, yeah, should be fine. Okay, great. Yeah. So our hope <laughs> the next time we convene with this group of fine people is to again get to the heart of the matter. I think that we were at the cusp of it, defining mm -hmm. the desired invariance. So when we have when we start this conversation again, we can get into what. What are the current properties of our shim of Harden that do not satisfy, do not fully satisfy that does the satisfy the design, and that I think uh, is is topical of proxies that throw exceptions from traps, and we can get into that in more detail. Okay, and also for that meeting to make sure we um, we actually get to the topic. Uh, um, uh, things that are sort of uh, questions about the larger context and, and possible completely different design directions and motivation issues and all that. Um, uh, we're welcome. We welcome those conversations in general, but let's let's try to keep the meeting specifically on the tenth, very focused on the opportunity to have Tom and Peter and Patrick here at the same time. Cool. Yeah, uh, uh, and that we'll, yeah. we'll make sure to, uh, well, send the link to the recording uh, and also the issue. Um, I don't remember, Chris, was the issue shared uh, with a mailing list or? No, I don't I think, think I wrote it after. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, you may, I, I remember the issue. I don't recall whether you sent a follow up to the mailing list. Um, um, so we'll make sure to share that more broadly as well. All right. Um, take five. See you next time. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.